In this POV video, I'm going to take you along for a portrait session with the GFX 100S and the GF 80mm f1.7. So I'm primarily a X-Series crop sensor Fujifilm photographer and I'm still working on incorporating the GFX into my workflow. But the reason why I brought it out for this particular shoot was for a film versus digital challenge with a fellow YouTuber based in the San Francisco Bay Area, Chris Chu. For this challenge, I was going to be limited to 16 shots. So only 16 photos that I could take and this was because I was going to be matching with the 120mm film that Chris Chu was using in his Hasselblad. So for this first shot, I really wanted to accentuate the studio space with kind of like a pulled back environmental portrait. I asked the model, her name is Seema, uh, to sit on the edge of the chair on the left and then kind of like face toward the light that's coming out of the large windows on the left of the room. And in order to fit everything in this photo, I had to scoot back pretty far all the way to the back wall on the opposite side. Okay, three, two, one. And then playing off this same shot using kind of like the door panes, I added a little bit of variety by turning the vertical composition and then having Seema look toward me. And using this same lighting, it created a side lit look that has more contrast on her face, so really split between the highlight and the shadows. Three, two, one. And then looking at the opposite side of the room, there was a stairwell at the back and I wanted to use this to kind of have the opening frame her head. So I have her stand up and have her look straight at me again for that kind of like side lit contrasty look and then having her head be in a subframe using that stairwell opening. Three, two. And then keeping pretty much the same composition, I just have her turn over her left shoulder, looking all the way into the light. And this gives a nice highlight to the profile of her face. And I'm asking her to kind of like play with her hair just to add some interest to the frame. Three, two, one. And as I'm looking for shots, I think I'm mainly being inspired by the environment and the lighting, so specifically like the windows for what will be my next shot. I try to use this window to kind of like create a cool silhouette, but actually I wasn't getting a lot of the separation that I thought it was going to be having since she was seated. So I, I scoot back all the way to the back and I include some foreground interest on the left of the frame. At the right edge I do have kind of like the pain kind of have a bold contrast on that side. Three, two, one. When I was bringing the photo into editing, I ended up processing it as a black and white just because it was a little bit too busy and I actually gave it a more high key look when I thought it was going to be a silhouette beforehand. Um, it's not something that I typically do, but I just tried to kind of pull this shot out and, and make it something. And the cool thing about having good directional light source is that you can seamlessly move from like a backlit scene to a side lit shot, or in this case, what I call a 45 degree light shot. Having her sit back into the chair and then directing her to turn 45 degrees of her face into the light, into a side lit window, actually gives a good balance between shadows and highlights on her face. And if you actually want to learn more about this technique of 45 degree side light and how to use directional lighting during shoots, be sure to check out my photography course, the Light and Lines Bootcamp, which is linked down in the description of this video. Three, two, one. Okay, so leveraging that 1.7 aperture, I, I borrow a composition that I typically do for weddings, having her close her eyes and uh, focusing on her eyelashes. And then I'm holding the camera higher up and pointing it slightly down to get this shot. So at this point, I was trying to make every shot have a good amount of variety and I see this bench right next to the large window and I think to try to set up for like a reflection shot. As I'm getting up close to the seat, I can have my camera a little bit closer to the window and I actually ask her to like caress the window to make sure it looks a little bit more dynamic. Three, two, 
And after that shot, I'm now having her look back at me, moving away from the reflection but using that same beautiful light, and then I'm framing her head in between the window panes in the back. So at first I try to leverage this highlight coming from the window, but it, it actually did not shine enough on her face to make it not look awkward, so I actually scratched the idea, and then I just turn her around the other way, and I go for a solid 45 degree lit headshot type portrait. Again, this is basically a side lit portrait, and then I have her turn her nose 45 degrees toward the window, and I do try to crop it a little bit tighter than usual, so it's shoulders up kind of cropped at the top of her head. Three, two, one. So now that I've got enough shots inside, I want to step outside and use that direct sunlight and maybe not be as interrupted as it is indoors. So this time I'm framing her with the door frame and really trying to capture those diagonal lines of the light rays. I expose the image for the highlights. Um, I've never really done this before with the X series, but I expose the GFX for the highlights and have her close her eyes while I dial in kind of like the exposure of the shot. And then when I'm ready, I have her look up with her eyes closed into the sun. There you go, close your eyes. You can see that the shadow recovery for this edit was super clean. It's something that I'm not used to on the X-Series cameras, which would probably be really useful to have this kind of in my bag just in case when I'm doing portrait sessions in very high dynamic range scenes. So I'm using this same light and pose and actually come in closer to add some variety. I always try to pair a tighter shot with a wider shot. So whenever I find something in good light and a good pose that I like, I always try to do the opposite of what I just did. Three, two, one. Right. Okay, so now I bring Seema out of the direct sunlight and I'm bringing her into the shade. And I'm looking at the back and framing the back of her head using the doorway as a subframe. Even if you have a shallow depth of field lens like the 80mm 1.7, it still does pay off to pay attention to your framing. Three, two, one. So this time I'm going to have her look over her left shoulder again and then framing her head using that same door frame. Always be on the lookout for kind of like these shapes that naturally appear in your environment. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of furniture rearranging so that her head will be backlit by the sun when she is seated. And then having a backlit subject with a dark background, that really helps to give you that separation from the background. So it's easy to have a backlit light and airy shot, but it's a little bit more difficult and nuanced to have a backlit subject and then pair them with a darker background. Three, two, one. And then taking that same lighting and just coming in for a closer crop, I finish off with this kind of like more headshot type feel of a shot. Three, two, one. Sixteen. Oh, sixteen? Yeah. That was good. That was real good. Dude, I saw some of the, the back of your screen like, that looks real good. <laughs> <laughs> So overall, I'm I'm really impressed with the clarity and resolution of the GFX 100S. I think that should be a given because that is the main strength of the camera is really the resolution and the sensor size increase over the X series cameras. While I don't think I'm still going to be using this type of seat of a camera for my main documentary kind of work, I really do love it for that kind of slow down portrait work. Um, and I think it could definitely be of good use during kind of like wedding portraits or anything again, like I said, with those high dynamic range environmental portraits that I'm having trouble to kind of get a clean shot with my X-Series cameras, the GFX 100S is really going to come in a pinch. And with that, my name is Reggie Ballesteros, and if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you love this video, please consider subscribing for more Fujifilm or photography videos every single week. And if that's too long for you, I really encourage you to check me out on Instagram and follow me there as I make new tips, tricks, and tutorial posts every single day. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.